canaries are an exploit mitigation technique that is based on the idea of the proverbial canary in a coal mine. And this is based on the real action that miners would take to bring a canary, a small bird with them, into a coal mine. And if there was the presence of toxic gases that would be harmful to humans, the canary would be more susceptible to the gases and would consequently die in the presence of the toxins before the miners themselves would be hurt. So the idea here is that the stack canary detects the presence of a toxic substance like acid before it can cause any real damage. These are also known in some implementations as stack cookies with the idea of you know, breaking the cookie and cookies are not as good if they're broken. But the idea is that you take a random number and you place it between the local variables, which will be on the stack, and the return address, which will be on the stack. And the idea is before you return from a function, you check that random number and you say, is it still uncorrupted? And if so, great, return. But if it is corrupted, then you should not use the return address because it could have been subject to a stack buffer overflow. So this is generally added by the compiler, although you, know, you can hack them into binaries via dynamic instrumentation and stuff like that. So there's a bunch of assumptions that come along with stack canaries. The first is that it assumes that what you're trying to combat is a linear stack buffer overflow where it's going from the local variables and smashing the stack all the way up to the return address. So if any of these assumptions are violated, then the defense will not actually work. That's again why it's called a mitigation and it's not actually a fundamental prevention mechanism. Another assumption is that it's hard for an attacker to guess that 32 or 64-bit random number. And another is that it's, it's not possible for the attacker to read the value and write back the correct one. So if we go back and we consider the basic stack overflow and we've got you know, mem copy from an acid buff of acid length into the vulnerable buffer, then the idea here would be that it goes and it copies and then it smashes the stack canary before it ultimately smashes the return address. And so then there is going to be a check before you return that says, is this location right here still the random number? Is it still the correct and uncorrupted stack canary? If so, then great, return. If not, don't return because the return address could be acid. Now, like I said, there's assumptions, and so each of these could be violated in turn by an attacker depending on the situation. So for instance, the assumption that it's a linear writing buffer overflow could be violated if the attacker has control over the destination pointer. In that case, they could perhaps you know, skip up here and cause the buffer overflow to just overwrite the return address without actually corrupting the stack canary. And then again, you know, these are the other assumptions that, you know, for instance, that it's hard for an attacker to guess the 32-bit number. Well, that all comes down to the implementation. And if perhaps the implementers did not have adequate randomization, maybe it's much, much easier for the attacker to guess a possible number that will succeed. And then also the assumption it's not possible for the attacker to read the canary because if they can read the canary, then they can write back the exact correct value while they're doing their linear buffer overflow. And so, you know, violation of that assumption is down to vulnerability class called information disclosure or info leaks that will be talked about in a future class. At the end of the day, stack canaries are an extremely cheap exploit mitigation mechanism, which is important and should be enabled in all locations. You can see the website for more details about how to enable it in different compilers.